Hi, I'm Alex and this is Pucks and Paperbacks. Today I'll be sharing with you the eight books I read in July. If you want to know what I read in June, that video will be linked up above. The first book I finished in July was If It Makes You Happy by Claire Kahn. This was my book club pick for my Patreon book club. We have a bi-monthly book club where we read The Rainbow in LGBTQ plus books, meaning that every month is a different color of the rainbow. This month it's green and we're going to be reading How to Be Remy Cameron by Julian Winters. If you want to join us, my Patreon link is down below. It's only a dollar to support me and get access to my fun perks. Now this one was not a big hit with the book club and I read this on audio and I didn't hate it but there were definitely some plot issues where I was just kind of confused what was going on but it had really good conversations and I really enjoyed our main character. So this is about Winnie. She's in town for the summer visiting her grandmother and working at her grandmother's diner Goldeen's. And I love a small town setting so I really liked this. I'm currently re-watching Gilmore Girls and this gave me so many Gilmore Girls vibes because it's a small town but also because at the beginning of the book Winnie is crowned the summer queen against her own will. And Rory also has that happen to her and she is crowned the ice cream queen. So I enjoyed some aspects of the book but the plot was just so all over the place that I still cannot tell you what this book was truly about because there were so many different things going on. Specifically I thought this was about a cooking competition because at the beginning of the book Winnie announces that there is a cooking competition and her and her friend Kara are going to enter and Winnie wants to enter the diner and her grandmother's food into the cooking competition but her grandmother says no. Without spoiling it I just didn't like that we didn't have a whole book about a cooking competition. This book is definitely not for everybody because I know my friend Allie just read it and really enjoyed it. I'll have her review down below but I just thought that the plot was just so all over the place and I thought I was being sold a cooking competition but I wasn't. But I still enjoyed what was in here. There's really good conversations about fat phobia and Winnie is really a fierce main character. She's just very stubborn but she also stands her ground and she doesn't let anyone mess with her and that is my favorite thing in a character. So I really enjoyed her and the conversations around fat phobia were really important and I like how she challenges other people's fat phobia but also just talks about the biases that people have because there's a scene where her stepsister keeps telling her that she should just walk with her and she's like but I don't like to walk like that's not gonna do anything and so I really enjoyed the conversations in here and we do have a queer platonic relationship which was really interesting. Kara and Winnie are in a queer platonic relationship. According to reviewers Kara is asexual and I really enjoyed seeing this because I think it's really important for teens to be reading books like this to know that there's options and I just thought this was really cool. There are some conflict that I didn't agree with the way it was handled but overall I liked some things in this book but I didn't love it. But like I said this book has a lot of mixed reviews so you're either going to love it or hate it. Trigger warnings for food descriptions, fat phobia, asthma attack, emotional abuse, and there are some HP references. I read a lot of picture books in July so that I could get ready for my book recommendation video where I recommended queer picture books. If you missed it I'll have it linked up above. First I read Heather Has Two Mommies by Leslie Newman and Laura Cornell and this one I thought was just fine. It is a book about a girl who has two mothers and she goes to school and she feels like the odd one out because everybody's asking her why she doesn't have a dad. And the end has a really good message of like teaching that not every family is the same and I thought this was really awesome because it did come out in the 90s I believe. It was first published in 1989 so this is a revolutionary book that it was published at that time just to show that queer people have always been here and so I really appreciated this book but I thought it was just fine. I really didn't like the illustrations honestly. They kind of threw me off. I did read it 
digitally, but I just didn't like the illustrations. But I would recommend this for the story and I think it's an important book to read. Then I wrapped up my queer baking video where I read queer books about baking. That video also will be down below if you missed it. I love that video so much and had a lot of fun with it. For that video I read Rosalind Palmer Takes the Cake by Alexis Hall and I loved this book so much. It was so hilarious. I was laughing so hard. I read it via audio but I also had a library copy and I just really enjoyed this. It is about Rosalind Palmer who is a single bisexual mother. She's on a competition like the Great British Bake Off and it was just so fun to read. The content warnings are on the author's website so I'll have it linked down below but let me just read them out really quick. Sexual content on page but not graphic. Classism, emotionally distant slash emotionally unsupportive parents. Discussion of teenage pregnancy which happened in the past. Brief mention of Rosalind Palmer considering an abortion. She kept the baby. Casual biphobia, casual homophobia, unwanted sexual advances slash threat of sexual assault. Gaslighting, an attempt at blackmail doesn't go anywhere. Mild violence, one character throws a punch. Very graphic swearing and insults from one particular character that continues throughout the book. I thought this was so well done because it is really hard to write a book with a full cast of characters because this is a competition show and there's at least probably like 30 people on the show and so the fact that Alexis Hall was able to give everybody a personality and you still knew who everybody was I thought was really impressive and I cannot wait to read more of his books. There's another book coming out that is set in the same show. I just got it on NetGalley and I'm really excited to read it. So those are some of my thoughts on Rosalind Palmer but go and watch my video for my full thoughts and reactions because I had so much fun with this book. And the last book I read for this video was The Heartbreak Bakery by A.R. Capetta and I love this book and I haven't stopped thinking about it. I love this so much. It is about Sid who is a gender and Sid is a magical baker. Sid works at a queer owned bakery in Austin, Texas and Sid gets broken up with by Sid's partner and Sid starts to emotionally bake and that has consequences. When Sid makes breakup brownies, everyone around Sid starts breaking up. I read this in two days and I just loved it. It was full of queer and trans joy and love. We also have a trans mask character whose pronouns are he, they, and they have pins to tell you what their pronouns are that day and I really enjoyed that. I just loved him as a character personally and this was just amazing. It really was. I loved the magical baking and I also tried the brownies from here. So go and watch my video where I make that. But that's it for the baking video. Now I believe we move on to all the picture books that I read. I'm not going to go through these in depth because that's kind of what my book recommendation video was for but I'll go over them quickly. First is If You're a Kid Like Gavin, words by Gavin Grimm and Kyle Lukoff, illustrations by Jay Yang. And this is about Gavin Grimm who is a young trans activist who is denied access to bathrooms. This talks all about trans activism and basically why we need access to bathrooms. <laughs> like honestly we shouldn't have to say that but unfortunately in this country you have to. Next I read Granddad's Camper which was so sweet. This is about a granddaughter who goes to visit her granddad and he tells her the stories of his late husband and about the adventures they went on in their camper and it was just such a sweet story. I really love books about queer adults and this one really warmed my heart. There are trigger warnings for loss and grief. I also read When Aiden Became a Brother by Kyle Lukoff, illustrations by Keilani Juanita and I loved this. It is all about a trans boy who comes out to his family and they end up having another child and as the baby's on the way he has taught them not to gender everything. And I thought this was a perfect picture book. I wish we had more like this. A lot of picture books are about a mom expecting and they're very gendered and I really enjoyed this one because it was a breath of fresh air. So I highly recommend this one. 
And last, I read Two Grooms on a Cake, the story of America's First Gay Wedding by Rob Sanders and illustrations by Robbie Catro. And this is all about the first gay wedding in Minnesota. And <laughs> that's all I need to tell you. That's it for my July wrap up. Let me know what your favorite book in July was. And if you don't feel like you're leaving a comment, just leave a rainbow down below so I know you stayed. Thank you for watching. I will see you in my next video very soon. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel when you do so. And if you're new here and you want to hear more of my thoughts on queer and trans books, feel free to hit subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.